Western Washington head coach Diane Flick Williams, to her left, Chloe Rudstensender, to her right, Gabby Gunterman, and to the far right, Malia Aliaga. After the Vikings advance to the NC in the NCAA bracket to play in Tampa, first coach just an opening statement about tonight's match. Um, well, before I do that, I first want to give a lot of gratitude to, to CSU, um, San Bernardino, for hosting the tournament and the way that it was hosted. It was really a first-class experience and a great student-athlete experience is what you really hope for in the postseason. So I want to thank them first and all their staff. I mean, it came down to even the, the students that were working were, were really first-class. So thank you, um, you know, for being so gracious to our team. Um, and then, you know, congratulations to Cal State LA for a great season. Um you know, they 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 just like to throw punches and it's they're really, really hard to play against. And, and you know, I, I just you know, I know that after talking with their coach, you know, how much they've been through to get to this point, too. So, you know, we've all had to have our battles this year. And so congratulations to them and their season. Um, man, I just I it's. I don't really have some good words. These guys know I'm a speech communication major, but I ain't very good right now. So, but I, um, you know, we were told to bring um, players up here, and I think I should have brought all 13 of them up here because everybody contributed in some way. Even the ones that weren't on the court contribute huge to what we do. Um, we kind of have a hue and cry that we are not stars because that's individual. We are a galaxy. And that was really uh, came full circle tonight and really showed um, – and uh, I just, I, I can't be more proud of how these guys approached the match. Um, I kind of knew from the beginning, even though oh, yeah, the first two games <laughs> were a little sketchy, um, but our block came to play today. And I think that is something that when our block comes to play, then I know that we are in a good space, um, good head space and good eye space um, to play. So um, just proud of you guys. You mentioned it was a little touch and go in the first couple of games. That's nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that, that confidence that your team exhibits to know that you can come back from something like that. Um, I think it comes out of practice every day. We do a lot of wash scoring drills, um, a lot of things where the control is in our hands and then it's in our, you know, who we're playing across the net, all our teammates at, at practice. And I think that's what really prepares us for moments like these where we go, okay, yeah, maybe we just won three out of bounds. <laughs> but we know that we can trust our training and that we've done it a bajillion times in practice. Was there ever any feeling of doubt or, or no, that doesn't come into your minds? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the tiniest bit. The tiniest bit overall. No. no. Yeah. Um, taking one set in a regional final by having to rally back is impressive enough, but to take two, how did once you got one, did you guys feel like the snowball was going to start rolling? <laughs> Based on your response, right? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say necessarily that. I think um, once a game stops and you start zero zero, then everything kind of you know you have to start it up again. And obviously, when we came out, I think zero five uh, in the second set, we were not rolling any snowballs. If we were, they were going uphill because we were having to push really really hard. Um, but uh, what I felt like in those last you know bits of those first two games, um, you know, we we do a lot of drills about the red zone. So once we hit twenty, how do you either stay ahead or how do you climb back? Um, and we're kind of comfortable there, um, a little too comfortable the way we did it, but, um, but I, we're, we have some comfort in that area. Um, and just, uh, the energy that I felt when we were there, um, is different. There was no panic. There wasn't, um, uh, overplay at that time. I felt like we were still really patient, even though it felt like we were far from their score at one point. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was really just the, the feel it's hard to describe the feeling, but it didn't seem like it was so out of reach at that time. Ladies, what was the biggest adjustment you guys had to make in each of those each of those first two sets as you rally back from you know deficits in the middle and at the twenty mark? Oh my gosh! I mean, it usually lies with us. It's usually tied to something uh, of a error kind of idea, or like Diana said, like overplaying or reaching out to something, playing outside of your zone. It's usually it goes back to our best play, simple play. And we play our best volleyball when we're trusting the people around us and not trying to do anything more or anything less. And I think that's our biggest thing is when we start to do a little too much, we go, okay, back down the baseline. <laughs> or when we do little, which I don't think we really do. I think it's more of an overplay kind of thing. We're but, overthinkers, yes. Yeah, I think that's more where it lies for us. Um, Coach, you had talked about how the GNAC prepares you for this sort of a, you know, tournament, you know, scenario. 
Mm-hmm. I, and I'm sure there were plenty of times over the course of the year where you guys were down 5 0 to start a set or 3 yep. 1. Or Wait, that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about what your team learned from those experiences that they took to set two where they were down 5 0 or set one where they were down big in the middle. Uh, if you would have looked at us in the first half, probably the GNAC season, those were games we lost. Um, we, I don't think we had our first 3 0 until second half, second half of the yeah. GNAC season. We, we played every match four or five mm-hmm. sets. Uh, in the first half. So um, I think basically like uh, Gabby said, is that most of the time we looked at what caused those things and what is in our control that caused those things. Um, And instead of thinking about, oh no, what are we doing? Here we go again. We thought more like, oh yes, what can we do? And let's push forward. So we did a little bit more of a mindset change, I think of uh, instead of saying, um, you know, it's happening to us, let's gain control of what we have and then continue to fight. And, And we do think like, Games are marathons. So, you know, if someone goes out of the gate in the first uh, mile of a marathon running five minutes, you don't expect them to run five-minute miles the entire time. You know, you can't just change your game plan because of it. So you keep your pace going and then see what happens at the end of the 26 point whatever. I've never run one, so I don't know how far it is. (laughs) So the far away it is. Ladies, you guys have been to the national championship tournament before. How special is it to return to the national championship tournament because the game was taken away from us last year? I think this is so special. Yeah. I mean, I was a red shirt when these guys went to the national championship the last time, and just being in that atmosphere is like an experience you can't even describe. Yeah. I feel like so. I think this is really special for our group. Definitely huge. Cause it's definitely a sting to lose. <laughs> so um, I think it's definitely going to be a good opportunity to go back and give another try. Um, what's that week like for you? For you, how much you know anticipation is there from when you get on the plane tomorrow morning to go home to when you get on the plane to leave for Tampa, whenever that one's the travel day? <laughs> yeah, we um, it's kind of the same thing what we've been doing. You know, we just prepare for the next match. Um, we probably got to do some laundry. I'm gonna assume, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, it's about getting ourselves ready so that when we go there, we have um, you know, everything, all our ducks in a row to compete at the best level that we can. So. Um, you know, it, we won't know exactly what it's like when we get down there because sometimes we have, have some of the things that we did before, which are great with the community service events. So you have, you have some extra things that you do while you're down there. Um, but when it gets down to business, it's time to play ball. And, you know, we plan to bring it. Chloe, again, you had your hands in the end of each of those, set, the first two sets, big time. As you start to, you know, rack up blocks and kills, do you feel like a fire, you know, there's a fire being fueled and that ultimately results in you guys winning a set like that? Um, I think that my team is what fuels my fire, honestly. I don't know, like, you guys see all of us play together and we are all, like, our, each other's biggest cheerleaders. And they're the people who fuel that fire for me. Everything we do, we can't do without one another. And I'm just so proud of everyone on our team because literally, we could, like Guy said, we could not do it without every single person standing next to us on the court. What's that feeling like when you see that final ball um, hit the floor, um, uh, and you know you, you you rush the floor the floor there really quickly before they you know set up all the tables and whatnot? Because um, you know winning it's not easy. I, I used to have a saying when um, I was if, helping at the high school level that if when if it was you know if it was easy everybody would have rings. Mm-hmm. So what's that feeling like when you rush the floor after that final ball hits? I mean, kind of indescribable. It's almost like a moment like, whoa, is it really, did it just happen? Is there another point to play? Like, it, it feels like this, like, just almost like you don't even know what's happening for a second until everyone's around you and you, like, uh, feel the electricity of your team that is like, whoa, and then it shows up. And usually, it, like, more emotion follows later. I feel like it's kind of like a shock period <laughs> to then feeling what you're feeling. But just indescribable, wonderful, amazing, love it. <laughs> I think our assistant coach said it best. James said it when we were in the locker room. He was like, ball at the floor but I was ready for the next point because we were kind of just in that mode of okay we got to just keep playing point for point so when it hit the ground it was like who's serving <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to serve okay let's let's go cheer it out you know is every time you win one of these a little more a little different than the previous one yeah I mean this is our fourth in 20 years so uh it's not like it has often like you know it's not like hey, you know I It's different. These guys are different. This team is different than the team in 18 because they were all, you know, babies when it was that Mm -hmm. time. And that was different than the team in 15 because 
you know, and then in 07, how old were you guys? Seven. Okay, that hurts my soul. <laughs> but, you know, but like it, every team has this different personality. And even this team next year will have a different personality, even though everybody's returning. Um, they're just, they're all special because there's something in that season that makes it happen. And, um, you know, that's what we know inside the walls of our team room. For this group, what was it that made, Coach, for you, what made this, has made this group so, you know, so much fun for you to coach? You know, I can tell you have a lot of fun with them, but you're serious at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, it it was, COVID was really hard. It was really, really hard. And it was hard because um, it was hard to teach the lessons that I knew we had to learn, but these guys didn't know it and didn't always accept it. So talking about culture and team and togetherness and relying on one another, being vulnerable with each other, all that kind of stuff couldn't happen over Zoom. And so it started to happen in the preseason and why we went four, why we went five, like why our preseason, when we went to Denver, if you would have, if Kim and I were going to sit there and talk about going to nationals, we both would have been thinking, you're a liar, no, I'm a liar, you're a liar. Because, you know, we were both having to go through those, that process of trying to get our team to, to, you know, get back into what we're doing right here, right now. Um, And so they bought into it and every day they worked on it and they've had hard conversations with their teammates. They've had to call each other out. They've had to love one another, like really tough. And, um, you know, and the, and the other part about it is our, our difference makers. So people call them bachelor. We call them difference makers. They are in every single point that we play and they each have a role and they play to its fullest. So you can see the seven, eight, nine that we put on the court, but all 13 of them, and then you include our six red shirts. I mean, they're all part of what we're doing today. I want to know what last night was like for you guys. Um, uh, you know, you're, you're back at the hotel. I, I don't know if you had the San Bernardino LA match on or what, but <laughs> was there like an uh, – because we know LA had a you know, really solid year. They took out Pomona last in the you know, those semis. And as you're watching that match, what's kind of going through – your mind, because I, I mean, let's face it, I, I was expect, expecting, you know, you guys in San Bernardino, like at Cal Baptist in, what was that, eight, uh, 17? <laughs> um, I'll be flat out honest with you, I watch more of us than I did LA, because that's kind of my, how I normally function is, what do we need to work on, because we can't tell LA what they're going to do we have to do what we're going to do on our side of the net. So we, that's what our improvements were. And then LA's game plan against San Bernardino is very specific to San Bernardino. So um, I didn't expect to see as much what we saw there as they, as they were going to play against us um, because we have some different personnel issues. Um, so um, I honestly fell asleep at 1130 because I was so exhausted. Um, and you guys would be proud. I got up at 430. So I actually slept for like four hours. I know. Thanks. Um, but and then when we just we looked at them and we said, okay, what are the couple things that they do that looks like they do over time, and then what are we gonna do? How are we gonna present ourselves when we play? That was the main point. I'm good, Jess. Yeah, I got one. You get, you talked about the galaxy mm-hmm. thing, and if you look at the numbers tonight, all five of the primary attackers between seven and thirteen really balanced, and maybe you can talk about that. Maybe Maria can talk about that about knowing you can go anywhere you want with a set because you just got so many people on five. You know, I think it's it's actually, I would look at it more in the reverse, that it's not that we have so many that Malia can go to, but Malia goes to so many mm-hmm. because that's what makes it so balanced. Um, she is a very underrated setter. And uh, I might be standing on a soapbox here and I'll do a dismount, spray my ankle, but whatever. <laughs> um, but Malia is, I'm not, I don't mean to talk about you like an hour. <laughs> but Malia is a, a, a fabulous setter and she's fabulous because she goes unnoticed. And um, you're not going to see the, you know, accolades piling up for her um, because you just kind of, she's like I talked about Chloe yesterday, she's just stealth. She puts up good balls. She gets people in one-on-one situations. She continues to go back to them, even if they make an error, and she get, makes them feel like a million bucks, and that's what creates the balanced offense. So I'm I'm your biggest fan, by the way. So I'm going to get a Malia all the other shirt, <laughs> and I'm going to wear it with pride. <laughs> Malia, to follow up on that, what do you see out there? How are you able to, to do all that? <laughs> She's special. <laughs> I am special. <laughs> no, I honestly have so much trust in every single person that is put on to that court. 
out there, no matter if they're one of our difference makers coming in during the middle of the match or one of our starters, even if they feel like they're not doing good, <laughs> I have so much trust in them in whatever ball I give them. And I also feel like um, that like I can't set anybody without Casey and Tupu or our serve receivers, defenders, picking up the amazing balls that they do. I mean, they set me up for so much success as much as, I mean, they do for every us. single hitter on this team mm -hmm. is a rock star. So, I mean, they pull every single block. All right, congratulations, ladies, Thank and you. best of luck in Tampa. Thank, Thank you so much.